think suicide is a very, it's a tough subject to handle, especially for my age group. If you choose not to have the hard discussions, you're only promoting them to stay silent. There's hope, there's help and treatment available. There's a lot of resources that if you're struggling or you know someone who's struggling that you can reach out to that are free. Few topics are harder to talk about than suicide, especially when it involves our children. Health experts have found it is critical for the media and school districts to be especially responsible with the way these cases are handled, to make sure young people know there is hope and that seeking help is a sign of strength, not weakness. Tonight, Fox 13 News investigative reporter Adam Herbetz joins us in studio to ask how victims should be remembered and whether Utah schools are handling it the right way. Adam. Yeah, Bob, research shows the steps taken after a suicide can either lead to suicide prevention if handled responsibly, or it could put students at a greater risk if handled irresponsibly. This past school year, one Utah school made a careful but permanent decision. That's drawing scrutiny from a victim's family, her classmates, and suicide experts. Most people who do have suicidal thoughts don't bring it up, and it's very brave of them if they do. Last year, Addison Condi was the Bonneville Junior High School yearbook editor. But now, after a year of difficult conversations, she looks through the pages, realizing what she wanted to publish never made it into students' hands. And I saw that the editor page had been ripped out, so I was a little confused. I was like, that's weird. So I thought it was a mistake. It was not a mistake. The school intentionally ripped out this page from each yearbook, showing a photo of her teacher wearing a shirt to honor the death of a classmate who died by suicide in March. Like physically ripped out, like you can see in the book that there's remnants of a page. I just want an explanation as to why. I think it's just dishonorable. If you even knew Marina at all, she wasn't silent. Um, she would stand on her principles no matter what, and she had a good moral compass, a solid moral compass. Marina Jensen was 14 years old. We interviewed her dad the day after Father's Day. She was so very, very valuable and unique and special. You don't think somebody that strong and that mentally capable and that loving and kind has, you know, these deep, deep things inside of them. This is not how she would have wanted this to happen. Marina's photo was never taken on school picture day, which means nothing even mentioning her enrollment was published anywhere in the yearbook. That's why Addison says she wanted to dedicate a full page in the yearbook to her classmate to start an important conversation about mental health, drawing more attention to the way Marina lived instead of the way she died. Granite School District denied that request and only found out about the teacher's t-shirt after the yearbook's publication. They brought more of a, oh, what's this? Why is it gone kind of attention. Nothing that we wanted to do even said anything about the way she died. It simply said her name or showed a picture of her. It was a positive way to memorialize her. I think that's the very most important thing, checking in more, having more conversations. Um, just getting to the root of problems. Experts tell Fox 13 they agree. Dr. Thea Gallagher, a clinical psychologist and professor at UPenn, gives Granite School District credit for having mental health counselors on campus after Marina's death. But she worries about the message of ripping out a page from the yearbook. The worst thing that can happen is that kids continue to isolate and don't tell people how they're feeling, and then they're not gonna get the help that they need. Did the school have any conversations with you about the yearbook? No. A spokesperson for Granite School District declined to go on camera, but said administrators made the decision in an effort to avoid putting students at risk of being re-traumatized. He says they asked the Utah Department of Health for guidance. That's not true. So we were not involved. The Department of Health has not been involved in any school level decisions. Those decisions are made by the school at the school level. The Department of Health also declined to comment on the specifics of this case, but each year they do send out this 76 page handbook laying out best practices for how to respond after a suicide. It states romanticizing the death of a student is dangerous, but there are ways to honor them in a healthy, appropriate way including in the yearbook. 
quote, the focus should be on mental health and or suicide prevention. Underneath the student's picture, it might say, in your memory, we will work to erase the prejudice surrounding mental health problems and suicide. It's easier to kind of try to hide that and, and the guidelines certainly don't encourage you to hide those deaths, but you have to treat them very sensitively. Does it seem like perhaps this is just a case of the school district being overly cautious? Do you think it does more harm than good? Absolutely. This is a person, this is a human, and we still need the opportunity to celebrate and grieve their life. The guidance also states it is important for all deaths to be treated equally. But Granite School District confirms a few years ago, a teacher who died from cancer did receive an in memoriam page in the yearbook. The district now says it no longer does that. All students who've passed away need to be recognized, not just some of them, not just the kids who are popular or that, you know, died by this cause versus that cause. Yeah, this creates that dialogue. This creates a bridge and a pathway for maybe a, one other kid to say, Dad, hey, I'm feeling kind of weird. Marina has two younger brothers, and Dad says having conversations with them after his daughter's death has been crucial. Randomly on one of the silent parts of the ride home, my oldest son said, Dad, this helped me. Dad, this helped me. He's glad the school was willing to have those same important conversations with students in the days after Marina's death, but he wants to know why it never continued. The only physical memory of his daughter now being a ripped out page. This is not the way to do it. Silence is not the way to do it. I don't want anybody's family to feel remotely close to how we feel. This has been a crippling loss. The Granite School District tells us the teacher who wore that shirt in her yearbook photo is now under investigation and could face disciplinary action. We've also learned that despite state recommendations, there are more districts in Utah similar to Granite that have not adopted a formal policy. Tomorrow night, we will be addressing that topic in part two of our investigation. We hope the most important thing you take from this story is that there is help available. Fox 13 is a proud partner with the Live On Utah campaign. So if you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, please call the Utah Crisis Line. The number is on your screen, 1-800-273-TALK. Or if you prefer text messaging, there is also a line for free and confidential emotional support. Simply text the word hello to 741 741. And of course, in the case of an emergency, please call 911. Reporting in studio, Adam Herbetz, Fox 13 News, Utah. Adam, such an important story. If you, as a viewer, have questions about tonight's investigation, Adam will be logging on to Facebook Live in just a few minutes. He'll try to answer as many questions as possible. And if you have a story you'd like the Fox 13 Investigates team to look into, send an email to iteam at fox13now.com or call the tip line at 801-536-1314.